If you're like me, then modeling and animating a character can be a slow and difficult process. Fortunately, there's websites we can use that let us download pre-made characters. One of these websites is Mixamo, where there's quite a few different characters you can pick from, and even more animations. At the request of a viewer, in this video I'm going to cover how to download and import a character from Mixamo, and then control and animate it using the Unity input system. I'm going to start from a new scene so I can go through every step of how to do it. First I'm just going to throw in a ground plane. Now let's move on to downloading a character. I'm just going to use the default Ybot. When we download, we want to make sure we select FBX for Unity, and T pose is just fine. Now to get it into Unity, we'll just open Unity, open the file location where we just downloaded the character and drag it straight into our folder. Now we can just drag the character straight into the scene and probably zoom out a little bit. Now that we have the character in Unity, there's a few settings we want to change in the inspector. So let's start at the Rig tab and we're going to change animation type from generic to humanoid and avatar definition should be set to create from this model. So we'll go ahead and apply that. Now we can see underneath the Ybot in our asset folder here we have an avatar that got created. I'm going to go ahead and open this up and show you what it looks like. The avatar is basically a map that Unity uses to figure out which bones are where in the character. If any of the bones get set wrong, you can change them here. The next thing I want to do is create an input action asset to start setting up controls for the character. If you don't have that setting, you're going to have to go to the Package Manager and include the input system. Now we can open the Action Asset and add a new map. The first action we're going to have is going to be the Move action. I'm going to change this to a value and then make sure it's set to be a Vector2. Now the first binding we want is going to be the left stick on a controller. So let's go to Gamepad and pick left stick. And then we'll add a new binding, but we want it to be a 2D vector composite. And this will be the W, A, S, and D keys. Now we'll create a new action and call it look. Change it to a value. Make sure it's set as Vector2, and for the first binding, we're going to pick the right stick. Now I'm going to add another binding and map it to the pointer delta. This just takes the amount that the mouse has moved by between frames. And our last action is going to be jump. Again, I'm going to use value, but this time I'll leave it set as button. And our first option will be the south button on the gamepad. And the second binding is going to be the spacebar. Make sure you either check the autosave box or click the save button. Now we can go over to our character and add in a character controller. We need to make sure that the Capsule Collider lines up with our character, so let's move it up a little bit. 
I also want to set the min move distance to zero because it causes a lot of problems with the ungrounded variable when we start programming. Now let's create a script so we can start controlling our character. The first thing we're going to want is a serialized field so we can set the speed. Then we need a vector 2 to keep track of our movement input. And last, we want a reference to our character controller. Now in start, we'll get a reference to our character controller. And then we need to make sure we import the input system. Now let's make a method that'll read the input from our move controls. We need to make sure we add in an input action dot callback context. And this is how we'll read the value from the input. So we'll save that value directly into our move vector. Now we need a method to actually move our character, so let's add that in. We're going to create a new vector based on the input that'll tell our character which way to move. So let's say vector 3 move is equal to transform.right, and we'll multiply this by the horizontal axis from our input. So move vector dot x, and we want to add in transform dot forward and multiply that by the y value of our move vector. Now we can call the move method on the character controller. So we'll say character controller dot move and we want to pass in that new move vector we just made, multiply it by our move speed, and then multiply by time dot delta time. Now we just need to call the move method from every update. Let's look at how that works so far. I just realized one of the important steps is to add the player controller to our player. We also need to add a player input component. And we're going to change it to invoke unity events, drag in our input asset, and then under events, we want to add a callback to move, drag in our player controller script, and select our on move method. Let's also change the speed to 5. Now we can move the character around. It's floating a little bit, and what causes that is. Under the character controller, there's this skin width, so if we just take that off, we'll be right on the ground. I'm going to go ahead and raise the camera up a little bit for now. And then let's angle it down toward our character. Okay, now let's hop back into the script and we're going to do something very similar to get the look controls working. So first, let's add another serialized field. And this will be our look sensitivity. Then we'll have a look vector. And then we need one more, that's a rotation vector. And this is a vector 3. So now let's go down and add our on look, which will be just like the on move. And 
I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this. And now we can say the look vector is equal to our input. Now we can recreate the rotate method. And this is what actually rotates our player around. So since this is going to be third person, we don't need to be able to look up and down. So we'll just say rotation dot y and set that equal to the x component of our look input. And we need to multiply it by the look sensitivity and then by time dot delta time. And then the last thing is we want to set our transform dot local Euler angles equal to our rotation. So this will just rotate our player around the y-axis based on how much our mouse has moved left or right. And just like move, we need to call this from the update method. Let's set a default sensitivity to maybe 5. So now if we go back to our character, go on our player input, under the events, and controls, we need to add a callback for look, which is again on our script and should show up right at the top. All right, let's test it out. Okay, obviously I did something wrong. Ah, this is supposed to be plus equals rather than just equals. So now you can see the players rotating, albeit rather slowly. Let's go ahead and increase our sensitivity a little bit. Now we can rotate the character around and move in all different directions. Now the last control we need is a jump, so let's head back into the script. We'll first create a new serialized field for the jump height. And let's also add in some gravity. And then we also need a variable to keep track of our vertical velocity. So there's a few changes we need to make to the move method now. At the beginning, we need to add to our vertical velocity. So we'll add in the gravity multiplied by time dot delta time. And then we want to check if we're on the ground. So we'll say if the con character controller is grounded and our vertical velocity is less than zero, meaning we're going down, which I just realized we need to make gravity negative. Or let's actually do it down here. So if our vertical velocity is less than zero, then we want to set the vertical velocity equal to zero so we stop getting pushed into the ground. And then on our move, we want to add in transform.up times vertical velocity. Now let's add in an on jump method. And again, we're taking in the input action callback context. Except this time, we want to say if the character controller is grounded, so if we're on the ground, and the context was performed, 
So that's basically saying if we're on the ground and the jump button was pressed, then we want to call jump, which we haven't quite created. So let's go ahead and do that. Now all we need in jump is to set our vertical velocity equal to math f square root and then we'll take our jump height and multiply it by negative gravity. Well, actually we want gravity since I changed it to positive. That should be everything we need to get jump working, so let's head back to Unity. We need to go back to our events, controls, and add jump. And then we also need to set these two reasonable values. That might be a bit excessive. Let's try 0.5. So now when I press spacebar, I can jump. Though it seems to be not working every time I press it. So I found out that the isGrounded variable on a character controller is only true if the character is moving. So what I did is instead of setting vertical velocity to zero here, I set it to a fraction of the gravity. So now if I go back and demonstrate, it should jump every time I press spacebar, as long as I'm on the ground. And it seems to be working a lot better now. I'm going to really quickly use Cinemachine to add in some camera follow. So I'll create a virtual camera really quick, and then we're going to set our target to follow and look at as our character. And then our aim, we want an offset on the Y a little bit. And then I might actually go into the character rig and set the spine as the look at target, or maybe even something further up like the neck. Now when we play and run around, the camera should follow. If you don't use Cinemachine, you should definitely look into it. It makes a lot of things a lot easier to do. Now that we can control the character, let's add in some animations. So we'll head back to Mixamo and switch over to the Animation tab. First I'll get a Walk Animation. And I want just a standard Walk. Here we go. Now when downloading animations, you want to make sure you check the In Place box right here so that the character is not moving when the animation plays. Now we can go ahead and hit download, make sure FBX for Unity is selected, and we can do without skin, and we don't need to change anything else, so we can go ahead and download it. Save it in the same place as the character. Go back to Unity and we can drag it straight in. Let's go ahead and download a couple more animations. We'll get an idle animation. This one looks okay. And let's get a jump animation.
Now we'll need to change some of the import settings on these animations, so let's go ahead and select all of them. And we'll go over here. Under the Rig tab, we want to make sure they're set as humanoid. And we don't want to create from the model, we want to copy another avatar. So then we can go over to our character and drag this avatar in. And that just tells Unity how to use this character for the animations. Go ahead and apply that, and let's head over to the Animation tab. We're going to have to select these separate here. So we want to select a loop time for all the animations we want to loop. So we'll do it for idle and walking. And for now, that should be everything we need to change. Now the next step is to create an animator controller. And we'll go ahead and open that. Maybe make the window a little bigger or drag it out somewhere. And then we'll grab all of our animations and drag them in here. We want idle to be the default state, so since it's orange, that's good. Otherwise, you can set as layer default state. Go ahead and drag jump and walking over here. Now, if we go to our character, we should have this animator, so we can come over here and drag our animator controller directly into this box. And if we start, we should play the idle animation since it's set as the default. And there you can see it's in the idle animation. Now we want to be able to transition to the other animation, so making sure we're under this parameters tab, let's click the plus button and add in a boolean and call that is walking. And then f click on idle and make a transition to walking. We can select that transition, and we don't want an exit time on it. And then we need to add a condition. So if is walking is true, then we'll go from idle to walking. And then we also want to make a transition from walking back to idle and do the opposite. So we'll take off the exit time and say, if is walking is false, we go to idle. Now to make that transition happen, we need to go back to our character controller script. And we need a reference to our animators, so let's add that in right under the character controller here. And it is an animator. Just call it animator. And then we need to get the component, so animator equals get component of type animator. And now we can go into our onMove method. And now we can check if our move vector dot magnitude is greater than zero. So if there's any input at all, we want to say animator dot set bool. We need to get this name exactly the same as we have it right here. And we'll set it to true. We also need to make sure if we aren't moving, we set it back to false. So we'll copy and paste that and say false. So now if we are moving, the is walking boolean will be set to true, and if we stop moving, it's set to false. So we should transition back and forth between walking and idle. And you can see that it seems to be working. Now for the jump animation, instead of doing transitions, we're going to do a little bit differently. We'll go back into our script, and in the onJump method, right by where we called jump, we'll say animator.play, and pass in the name of the animation we want to play. So now every time we jump, it should just immediately play the animation, so let's test that out. Well, we can see that didn't 
quite work out as supposed to. Right, so we're going to need to make a transition from jump back to idle. And we'll leave exit time on this time. So when this animation finishes, we'll go right back to idle. And now the timing is still off, but we can fix that with some animation events. So let's go over to the jump animation, and we're going to scroll down and open up events. And we're going to want to be able to see this preview, so let's go through and pick right where the jump starts. About there seems right, and we can click here to add an event. And the function we want to call is jump. And in the object field, we want to add in our player controller script. So now back in our script, we don't want to call jump from here anymore. So let's see if that works now. That works better. We can see that the feet kind of float up off the ground a little bit before. Let's see if we can figure out what causes that. So to fix the feet coming off the ground when we jump, we just want to bake the transform position into the pose, specifically on the y-axis, so that when the feet raise up, the whole character moves down. Now it's still a little weird if we're moving and we jump, but you can fix that if you get different jump animations and play them based off if you're walking when you jump. That should cover the basics of getting a Mixamo character moving and animated, so you can start using them in your own games now. You'll just need to make a few minor changes to fix some of the weird sliding when you jump and some of the other issues with it, but most of that is just new animations. So if you liked the video, hit the like button, make sure you're subscribed, and thanks for watching.